Hey everyone, this is Nick, and as Flatpak and Flathub grow to become one of the default ways of installing software on Linux, people seem to have many worries about this specific application repository. With Flathub looking to add payments, donations, and even subscriptions with user accounts, does that mean there's a risk they could become an evil corporation that has a monopoly on Linux apps and end up hurting Linux in the long run? Well, let's discuss right after this message from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, and if you have instances running Ubuntu 18.04, you're probably aware that it's going end of life at the end of April 2023. Your options are basically to rush a migration or to stay on an end of life release with all the security risks this creates. Or you can subscribe to Tuxcare's extended lifecycle support. You just run one script and you'll keep getting security updates for your 18.04 instances, including for the kernel, Apache, PHP, OpenSSL, Python, and a lot more, without any tooling changes, plus 24-7 support in case you run into an issue. So if you want to take your time to plan your migration from 18.04 to a newer release of Ubuntu, Check the link in the description below and get started. Okay, first let's look at the things that make people worry about this happening. Because for most of you, Flathub is probably just an innocuous way to get software packaged as Flatpak. So first, Flathub isn't just an app repo, it's THE Flatpak app repo. Flatpak doesn't force you to use one single repository. You can create your own to distribute your own applications, and you can add repos, also called remotes, to your own system. A few examples of those are Elementary's remote, that contains all the elementary apps you can find in their app center, or you have a Fedora remote that contains a subset of apps from Flathub curated by Fedora. Flathub, though, is the biggest repository for Flatpak applications, to the point that, in most people's opinions, shipping Flatpak by default on a distro without Flathub enabled makes no sense. Elementary OS doesn't ship Flathub, mostly because they want to teach people that other repos are available, and giving them the biggest one right then and there would make this discovery very unlikely. Fedora decided not to use Flathub because they can't control what's on it, and they don't want to display apps that might be illegal, copyrighted, or patented in their default experience. Although it seems that they might be changing their opinion on that because in Fedora 38, you will be able to enable Flathub in just one click. But all of this is normal. It's a third-party repo for Flatpak apps that distros don't control. It's okay if they don't want to use it. What is starting to worry people is the direction Flathub is going. They want to add payments, donations, and subscriptions so users can adequately compensate developers for their work. And on paper, that's pretty awesome, right? Finally, a simple, unified way to donate or contribute to the applications you use without having to look online and add your payment details to a ton of different websites. It sounds good, right? Well, yes and no, because it creates a few issues that people are worried about. Notably, the user account thing, the power it would give Flathub over other ways of distributing software, and the whole commercial company approach. So let's look at all these problems. Now, to handle payments, Flathub needs to implement user accounts. At the very least, they need to have accounts for developers, so they can publish their applications in their own name and collect the money they make from these sales or donations. And they also need these accounts to help developers verify that they really own the apps they claim to. Because on Flathub, anyone can upload anything. I could re-upload LibreOffice right then and there and try to collect money from it even though I don't own the application. Legally, the license might allow me to do that, but ethically, that would be pretty crappy. So this verification process is already done in the beta version of Flathub. Developers are already able to confirm that they own the domain of the app and the GitHub or GitLab repo, so they can get that verified badge, and users in the beta version can already see which apps are official and distributed by the developers, and which apps are distributed by third parties or aren't just yet verified. With these accounts, developers will be able to set a price or just collect donations, and even set up subscriptions in the future. User accounts are also in the cards to handle user payments. 
And some people seem to think that these user accounts might be an issue because you're basically centralizing user data, Linux user data, in a single place. And I can understand the worry here, but these accounts don't have to have personal information. If payment is handled by a third-party solution, as it's planned with Stripe, then that account could basically just be a login and a password, and that's it. And let's not forget that these accounts will probably be optional. If you don't want to use them because you don't trust them, you probably will never have to use a user account just to download free applications from Flathub. So it's not that big of an issue in my opinion. Now, the more worrying aspect would be the power Flathub could gain. If Flathub's payment solution works well and developers start actually making decent money from it, then it means they will be more motivated to use Flathub as a platform to distribute their applications. This could lead to software being centralized on Linux, with developers ignoring other packaging formats and other repos, and Flathub becoming the only app store on Linux. But this does not seem very likely at all. First, let's not forget that applications on Flathub are 99% free and open source software, even if the developer decides to only use Flathub from now on, you still have the source code available. Distros can still package the applications, like they do right now. People can still create package builds for the AUR or unofficial app images. None of this is going away because developers would prefer using Flathub. All this unofficial packaging work is already being done by distros and individuals right now. This would not change. Second, Flathub is open source. All the code for that platform is open and they don't seem to plan to change that either. Which means that anyone who wants to set up a competitor remote that also offers payments and donations could do so reusing the code from Flathub. Even if developers moved en masse to Flathub, you would still have plenty of other easy to set up remotes for applications distributed via Flatpak. There is no competitive advantage when using open source software. Everyone has access to the same code. The only barrier would be infrastructure, basically the servers. And distributions already have that in spades to distribute their ISOs. And if a big enough distro wanted to set up a Flathub competitor, I don't think developers would ignore it. Third, let's assume Flathub does become a fully centralized remote slash app store that everyone starts using and that no competition remains or is developed. How would that be a problem? Centralization is only an issue if it ends up limiting what users can do and preventing them from moving away from that centralized solution. It's only a problem when it makes it impossible for you to do what you would like, when there's an abuse of power, basically. In this case, what you'd like to do is installing applications. With every single distro in the world moving to Flathub as a unified app store, how would users be prevented from doing anything? And the answer is, they wouldn't. Because as I said, Flathub mostly distributes free and open source apps. The code has to be available for anyone to see, modify, and redistribute. And even if no one else does it, you, the user, still can. And if Flathub started abusing that potential dominant position, then there would be zero barriers to creating a competitor or using something else. Developers could still go back to the existing distribution methods of today. Distros could go back to maintaining packages. Users could still compile the code. Centralization is only a problem when it creates lockdown, when you cannot escape it and it forces you to use it. Flathub becoming the de facto way of installing software would not create that. There would be zero barriers to use something else. And let's not forget that most people don't get their apps from the Flathub website. They get them from their app stores, Gnome Software, Mint Software Manager, Discover, and all the others, even the command line. For this payment solution to be remotely successful, it needs to be accessible using the Flatpak Package Manager, either through the command line or through the graphical app stores. If you can't pay directly in GNOME software or Discover, then this feature just does not matter. Users won't see it and users won't use it. Which gives another argument against Flathub becoming pure evil. 
The minute they start doing something weird with the money or the licenses or the applications, you can be sure that GNOME and KDE and all other desktop environments will ship a hotfix that disables all payment support in their stores. In that sense, you could even say that the payment solution FlatHub is working on will be decentralized because it won't just depend on FlatHub, it will also depend on the distributions and the desktops to decide if they want to implement it and how. This is a big stopgap to prevent anything weird happening. Now, of course, FlatHub will have to create some form of legal entity to handle payments, money, and user or developer data if collecting that is required somehow. And if you've been hanging out in the Linux or open source community for a while, you probably know that companies and money are <laughs> Now, jokes aside, what's to stop FlatHub from creating a corporation and then change licenses on their work once developers are hooked and start charging high margins on what users pay and basically get fat off the back of Linux users and open source developers? Well, first, that would mean you basically have zero trust in GNOME or KDE because the governance of FlatHub is being set up by people from GNOME and KDE and some people from FlatHub. And to the people who think that GNOME and Red Hat control all of this, it's some form of grand plan, no, stop, shut up. Red Hat has no stake in FlatHub, they don't even ship it in their own distribution. There are zero people from Red Hat in the FlatHub committee, and it will even be spun off the GNOME Foundation to limit the risks. Second, if FlatHub ever turned into some kind of Apple or Microsoft clone, do you really think they would still get the funding they need to run? FlatHub can only fund this payment processing work thanks to grants from various open source focused institutions like the Endless Foundation. They're actually looking for more of these grants to complete the work. If they started acting against the interests of the open source community, these grants would stop immediately and they would have no money to continue operations. Because let's be realistic, they currently have 700,000 downloads per day. If we're generous and we say that one out of a thousand of these downloads would generate one dollar, that's $700 per day. Let's imagine they take a big cut of 30% like Apple or Google do, and that leaves them with $210 per day. That's a whopping $6,300 per month barely enough to pay a full-time developer and taxes. Even if they doubled these figures, or even if they multiplied them by 10, that's hardly enough money to justify an evil plan to dominate Linux app distribution. With these kinds of numbers, this feature is going to be a nice to have for developers, but it's never going to be something that everyone relies upon and that completely changes the landscape of Linux app distribution. So basically, FlatHub cannot turn evil or greedy. The minute they do, they lose funding, they lose developers, and they lose users. It's simply impossible for them to decide to go commercial or evil. Now, of course, there are still questions about this process. How will it be implemented by desktops and graphical app stores? Will personal information be collected and for what purpose? Which payment methods will be accepted and in which countries? How does this gel with already existing payment solutions, like on the elementary OS App Center? Which form will the legal entity take? Will there be a commission on payments or is the money going directly to the developer once payment processing fees from Stripe are paid? Will this payment system be part of Flatpak or exclusive to FlatHub? All these questions and more need to be answered before people can fully trust into that transition to handling money. But I think it's very clear that it's basically impossible for an open source project like FlatHub to turn into an evil, greedy corporation overnight or even at all. And sure, you never know, governance of a project might turn sour without warning in the future. But at that point, there will be zero barriers for people to create a competitor, for users to move away, from developers to move away. There's basically no lockdown. So centralization isn't an issue at all. And at that point, everyone will be able to move back to the already existing packaging and distributing solutions that we already enjoy today, and that will still be alive and well once FlatHub added payments. 
Just like this segue to today's sponsor is also alive and well. If your computer is due for an upgrade, stop looking at Windows devices, stuff that has been crafted to run Windows. Look at computers designed to run Linux from today's sponsor, Tuxedo. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. And they have a nice big range of devices that should cover every need and every price point. Whether you want a laptop, an ultrabook, a gaming device, a tower, a NUC, they have everything. Every device is highly configurable at purchase. It will run Linux like a dream. And you can even open them, repair them and upgrade them, especially in the laptops where you can change the SSD, the RAM and even the battery. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, head over to the link in the description below and get yourself something from Tuxedo. They are really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, the dislike button also sort of works. And you can also tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support what I do, there are plenty of links in the description below for my social networks, the other things I do, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube membership, super thanks. Everything is down there. You'll figure it out. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.